Yo, this is Foul March. Right now, I need you to check out my interview on Animal Dawn TV. Um, in discussing the one song, I have to discuss the album. It's like I wanted to do scenes from a film, uh, and on my life per se. And I think, in being honest, of all of the songs. I supported a day where, uh, you know, you kind of calm down and you get reflective about the day or the week. And Black Hand Side had that sort of uh, Marvin Gaye feel to it in which um, the chords and the strings felt like a story and it felt like this isn't necessarily about me but the sentiment of the people. Which is which is a, a constant string going through the whole album. So it's produced by a, a guy that I've known for a long time. Rolls with a DITC named Mike Lowe, and I needed uh, Styles P on that because of his ability to uh, just bring the hood vision from that perspective to songs. And then Fonte just has such an incredible voice, so I wanted to keep it sad but real. You've managed to have one of the most important skills in any form of genre, and that's longevity. Like you've been doing this for a good number of years. When you first started, did you anticipate that still today you'll be making music? I, I, I did. I, I got into the game influenced by Coltrane and James Brown and Jimi Hendrix and just artists who I feel looked at the whole thing as an art as well as a career. So I say that to say I started listening, really started getting into music in high school and it was always like, um, you know, older stuff. And I'm like, man, how do these dudes manage to make this music that has a more shelf life than say pop or pop culture music at the time. So I studied Led Zeppelin and you know the things about the chord changes and chords and song structures and writing that makes it relevant. You know, love is a relevant topic all the time, but how you write a love song is what makes it cut through. So when I started in hip hop, I was never like, I'm gonna sell these records, I'm gonna get me a chain and a whip and then I'm gonna cash out and do something else. I thought about it in terms of how do you make these songs last? And you know, I wanted to write songs then about not being able to catch a cab, because that's where I was then. And I think you know, older artists now should write songs about Raisin Bran and arthritis. <laughs> you know, I you know, if it's written well, I'm gonna be like, yo, that joint that the dude, you know, I got up this morning and I laid back down. I can't drink, drink as much as I used to. I think we were just talking about that, like, even a young kid would be like, sounds like my father or I know that dude, or you know, just being true to where you are is important in the game. And hip hop is so uh, uh, forced by corporate, you know. Even the younger kids, when it's really, really honest, it resonates. If you're a freshman and you're writing about your freshman year, and people are like, yo, I remember that shit crazy. If you're a senior and you're writing about your senior year, it's still young shit. People are like, yo, just be honest to, to where you are. That's where I was. So back then, I always envisioned writing songs about older experiences or just life experiences, which where I, where I am now. Now, you got the song with Mortal Technique, We Are Renegades. And um, one of the lines that stuck out to me is when um, you're speaking about BET. And, and, and Viacom. With that being said, what is how can I put it? What is the power structure in music? You know, in terms of radio, 
TV labels because it seems like it is very controlled. I mean, you're someone who's been in the game for 20 years, so who is the people actually are controlling the structure and why is it that certain types of music are not coming to the forefront? Um, I believe that the numbers game and mathematically when you're at the helm of these companies, you do research and all of these things and it seems it's obvious that the demographic at the shows that do play videos or radio is pretty 12 year old to 18 year old what are these people buying let's do studies I, I can test that when I was that age I was listening to Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye as well as new edition and whatever was out that was supposedly for my age group and understanding both. So I just think it's a blatant lie to say to the kids that you won't be able to get Michael Jackson or you won't be able to understand Prince or Stevie Wonder. It's a lie. So you're playing down to this audience and you're filtering a revolving door of the same type of music I just feel it's unfair. That is what my grievance was with BET. Now you really are, like, I feel like you really are an amazing nurses. The way you put your words. I don't know how you do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does, how does Farah Marsh just, how do you do it, like, really? How do you put your words together? It's a, it's a couple of different processes. Thank you, <laughs> by the way. It's a couple of different processes which take time. You know what I mean? Um, and that's one of the issues with my career as well that I've been honest with and saying, fuck it, you know. Um, it was real popular that quantity was overtaking quality in hip hop with the surgeons of a lot, a lot, of, a lot of mixtapes coming out. And I was never a mixtape artist. So the writing process is being honest about what you're writing uh, and having it come from an honest place, whether it's silly or politics or world disasters or porn or whatever. What is the honest take on what you're saying? And then, you know, just vomit that out. And then I script it to make the verse. It, it may not be, uh, the flow that you want to rewind. It may be the pause or the space or whatever. Something is uh, as interesting as listening, is looking at it. A, I'm an artist, I mean, so I look at the work as a visual as well, so I try to be cinematic. So the opening for me has to be broad or something that captures you, you know, I don't know stab you in the eye with a needle in your iris a thousand times uh, and you're like, what did he say? Now that I got your attention, I can say something that I'm trying to have stay with you. So, it's get the person's attention, you know, say something you want to stick to their bones and then end with a great moral or a great man. What would be like Faramonja's top three classic rap albums ever made. I would say Public Enemy takes a nation of millions. Low in theory. Tribe Called Quest. Low in theory. Public Enemy. Maybe uh, N.W.A. This record speaks to that in a, in a hip hop sense. And aside from that, shit is pretty dope, man. <laughs> Mortal, cool. Styles, Gene, Royce, Joe Scott. Joe Scott, Citizen Cole, Vernon Reed. Really dope production. And um, it's just a, it's a solid record. So, we are Renegades War. Cop that supported. If you can't afford it, download it for free and give it to a friend.
a smart friend though. <laughs>